Okay, for purposes of lab, you're going to need to identify what spinal region that each vertebra is from, okay? We just went over typical vertebra when we looked at the thoracic example, and now we're going to try to find a way to differentiate between cervical, thoracic, and lumbar. You won't have to tell me if it's T3 or T8 or L2 or C4. You don't have to identify those, but you should be able to tell what section of the spine it comes from. So taking a look at the cervical vertebra here on the left, all seven cervicals, atlas, axis, and C3 through C C7, all seven cervicals will have transverse foramen, and you won't see those anywhere else. If you get to a practical and you see transverse foramen, it's got to be cervical spine. Of course, you remember the difference between C1, the atlas that had no body and two lateral masses, and C2, that you recall had the odontoid process or the dens coming up from it, okay? When you take a look at a thoracic vertebra, the thoracic vertebra, if you recall, all 12 layers of the thoracic spine are going to have somewhere a costal facet that's going to help you identify it as a thoracic, okay? And then the lumbar vertebra, basically you can tell it's a lumbar because it doesn't have any of those other features. Lumbars will not have transverse foramen. Lumbars do not have attachments for ribs, okay? Some students sometimes will look at the spinous and they'll look P to A, posterior to anterior. And on the left-hand side here, you'll see that some people maybe you hallucinate a little bit. That looks like a giraffe. And if you look at the lumbar vertebra here on the right, some people take a look at that and think that that's a moose. Uh, not the best foolproof way to tell the difference because between uh, C7 and T1, the, the vertebrae take on characteristics of the one next to it. And between T12 and L1s, the vertebrae look real similar as well. So uh, not the greatest way to identify, but some will use that.